So next topic is host firewall and antivirus software. Let's look at the four words. Firewalls were first applied to buildings to isolate fires and prevent fire from spreading from one area to another. Now this is firewall that we are talking about the building, the actual physical firewall. And in the communication field, which is our computing era, um, firewall are mainly used to protect the network against attack and the intrusion from another network. Okay, so mainly we are talking about to protect the company network being attacked uh, from the traffic from the uh, internet. Okay, um, so this is firewall. Then antivirus software is a type of a program tools that is used to remove known harmful program codes. So in the common terms, we call them viruses, software viruses, Trojan horses, um, you know, malware, and etc. etc. Or maybe sometimes you heard about worm software. So it's to clean up from the computers. Right, so upon finish, upon completion of this course, we should be able to describe the definition and the category of the firewall and to describe the main function of the firewalls and to describe the concept of antivirus software and distinguish between antivirus software from the firewall. So this is the contents. So we will talk about the Windows firewall, we talk about Linux firewall, and then we will talk about the uh, uh, antivirus software. So what is firewall? A firewall is a method of spreading private networks from public networks. Okay, so again, private networks typically refers to our corporate network, our company networks, and from public network means internet. Okay, and sometimes private network can also be um, a home, okay, or maybe small office, home office. Um, it is actually an isolation technology. Okay, so it's to separate between the, the network from our corporate and also the uh, okay, so this is the example the corporate network this is the firewall and this is internet and it's to prevent the hacker from um, penetrating or maybe try to attempt to access to our network so a firewall allows an only authorized people okay and data to access a network and prevents access from hackers Okay, so this is like hackers. So if a data fail to pass through a firewall, people on the intranet, okay, intranet means our local network here, cannot access the internet. And also people from internet cannot communicate with the people on the intranet. Okay, so intranet refers to the internal network. So let's talk about the classification of the firewall. Now in terms of the, the forms, um, firewall can be hardware firewall and it can be software firewall. Now hardware firewall is also known as the appliance firewall and software firewall are typically uh, is a kind of a software that to be installed on top of an operating system and then we configure the policy and therefore it becomes a software firewall. By protected object, so firewall can also be classified by protected object so we call it standalone firewall or we call it the network firewall. Now we will look at the details in the next few slides. So Windows firewall is one of the software firewall built into a Windows operating system. Okay, so this is just one of many. Okay, so this is example. Okay, we have a uh, operating system, the Windows running, and then we have a built-in firewall. And this is to protect. So just in case if we are using the Windows machine to connect directly to the internet, uh, so the Windows firewall somehow prevents will protect our our machine. Okay. So any traffic which is uh, which is uh, initiated from the outside, they couldn't they couldn't actually access to the Windows unless we specifically allow them to access or allow a particular traffic to access. So then 
and sometimes we also have the appliance uh, firewall uh, that is to protect the entire organization or maybe the entire home from being attacked by the hackers so let's look at the windows firewall settings okay now one of the easier way to open up the windows firewall you can actually go to the control panel and then you look for the uh, windows firewall or you can actually go to the start uh, menu and then you just search for firewall okay so here are some of the, uh, the the options that we can configure we will talk about each and every of this like the uh, allow and apps or feature that can pass through the windows firewall um, change the notification settings we can turn the firewall on and off we can restore the default and also the advanced settings okay so this is actually uh, the state or you can say the status of our windows uh, at the current state so this is example we um, so when we connect to a private network and uh, yes this is not protected by any firewall uh, neither when you connect when we connect to the gas or public network and uh, this settings here actually shows uh, it is actually not protected by any firewall at this moment right so if you look at the first configuration of the Windows firewall, um, we can actually allow an apps. Okay, apps means the application or a feature uh, that to pass through the Windows firewall. That means to allow an application to pass through a firewall uh, to the network. Okay, so here are some examples like 3D Builder, um, Connect, Core Networking, Cortana, and etc. etc. To change the settings, you can always uh, click the button here, change settings, and this once you click the uh, change up, change settings, we are allowed to actually check the boxes here, and this is actually separated by uh, private or public, right? Depends on the the network, the Wi-Fi network, or maybe the LAN network that we are connected to. And next is the settings of the modification of the notification rules okay so whenever we go to the uh, we click on the button notification and this is actually separated by private network and also the public network and you can actually check or uncheck the box for notify me when the windows firewall block a new application okay so this is actually recommended so at least you know what kind of a uh, software tries to connect outside or maybe tries to connect inside okay so this is actually to enable or to disable the Windows firewall now always bear in mind that um, this is actually the network type that we are connected to and so typically when we join a public Wi-Fi the Windows will actually promise are you, are you going to consider this as a public network or is it going to be a private network when you go back home when we connect to a home network um, so we typically will select private network or maybe when you connect to the office and we will select the private network and when it, and the rest of the network whenever you are in some um, public network free Wi-Fi network coffee shops whatever we will normally select the public network and then it is always recommended to turn it on okay to turn on the windows firewall and for the private network it is actually up to your configuration we can actually turn on the firewall and then we can allow a particular traffic to pass through so just in case you want to reset everything back to default um, there's a button there just press the button restore default settings and everything will go back to the Windows default okay this is actually after you customize the settings and things doesn't go the way that we expected to and so one of the quick way to restore is to press the button restore default okay then the next settings at the main uh, firewall screen is the advanced Windows firewall settings so once we click on the advanced Windows firewall settings um, we can actually configure um, more details rules 
such as the inbound rules and maybe the outbound rules. Now inbound rules basically means uh, what kind of traffic that you want to allow them to connect to your computers. Okay, so for example, uh, if your Windows, uh, you wanted to allow people to perform a remote desktop into your to control your Windows, and you you probably need to configure inbound rules to allow this kind of traffic, or maybe if you're performing, um, you you configure a web server on your Windows 10 or Windows 7 just for testing, you probably also need to configure inbound rules. Now outbound rules is actually uh, what kind of uh, application or software that you particularly wanted the software to to be able to access out of your your machine okay so let's this is the example so when you collect when you create uh, when you select the inbound rules and then you select uh, new rules over here and then it will pop up with um, this uh, wizard and so these are the steps okay so select the rule type, select the program, action, uh, which profile, and what is the name. For example, you configure a, a web server, and you can actually say, okay, I want this web server. You need to select the program, which is actually the execute executable file, which is actually running on the web server. Or maybe if you know exactly the port that's provided by the web server, then you can just select ports and after that you select you type in the TCP and followed by let's say port 80 okay and also you can uh, configure some predefined rules or maybe you can even customize the whole entire um, the firewall rules okay then after that uh, so if you click on the uh, uh, action so it's either permit or maybe deny after that you need to select uh, what kind of profile to be applied to private or public and after that you need to define a name for the rules and you can actually configure many 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 rules okay just like the example here so this that is a brief introduction to Windows firewall next we're going to talk about the Linux firewall now for Linux firewall is went through a couple of uh, uh, development one of the latest development is actually the IP tables what is IP table so IP table is actually a free packet filtering uh, firewall uh, it ev evolves along the development of the Linux kernel and has undergone four phases so um, now as we know Linux um, is basically is about the uh, operating system and uh, to be more specific about the operating system which part of the which piece of the software of the operating system and we call it the Linux kernel so kernel is actually the base the the, the core uh, of the software of the entire operating system um, so for example uh, we have Ubuntu we have Red Hat Linux we have SUSE Linux it's, it's considered a, a complete operating system but the Linux kernel is basically just one piece of the software which is the core software uh, we recognize by the uh, version so example 1.1 kernel 2.0 kernel version 2.2 kernel 2.4 kernel and etc and uh, at this time of recording uh, Linux kernel has actually developed up to version 4 point something and uh, different version of the kernel they actually um, we actually use a different uh, command to actually manipulate the uh, firewall rules okay so up to this stage uh, IP file IP tables is actually still being used to actually configure the firewall rules so this is IP tables structure now IP table structure goes like this um, IP tables and then we have tables the concept of tables which example like this one table 1 table 2 and within the table we could actually have multiple chained okay so within the table we have chain 1 chain 2 and etc within the chain itself we have multiple rules okay so um, so later we will look at some of the example now a table consists of change and the, and the chain consists of rules as shows as below figure Right, so let's talk about the basic concept of the IP tables, rules. So what is rules? 
If a data packet matches a rule, the packet is processed according to the rule. And IB table rules uh, specified quintuple information including the source address, destination address, source port, destination port, and protocol. Now the quintuple basically means the five um, information which is in the IP header. So we have the source IP destination and also the TCP port, UDP port, and source and destination port. If the data packet matches an IP table rules, the IP table processes the packet according to the method defined in the rules. Yeah. So for example, um, allowing the packet to pass through or discarding the packet. And this is what we call the uh, uh, action. Okay. So for, for instance, the rules here says, uh, whenever we saw that, uh, uh, whenever we detect uh, the source IP address, which is coming from this IP, to the destination of any IP addresses, regardless, uh, with the protocol of HTTP, which is to be more specific, TCP port 80, and then we will permit them. Okay, so this is actually the uh, the example how the IP table uh, look at the IP packet and decide what's the action. And the next concept here is called the chain. A chain is a path for transmitting data packets. Each chain contains one or more rules. When a data packet reaches a chain, IP packets matches the packet with the first rule in the chain. Okay, so this is like the uh, the sequence, like um, like something like the access control list. And it will check whether the packet meets the condition defined in the rules. So it will check one by one to see whether the packet matches any of the rules here. If yes, the IP, pack, IP tables processes the packet according to the action defined in the in the rules. If no, the IP packet uh, the IP tables matches the packet with the next rule. So, for example, uh, if the packet that passed through match the uh, rule number one then we will follow the uh, action over here which is permit example so if this is not match so it will go to the next rule and then you will check if this doesn't match it will go to the next one it will go to the next one if this match it will follow whatever the action is mentioned here if the packet does not match any of the rule in the chain the default policy in the chain will be used okay so usually uh, at the uh, beginning of the chain, we have a default uh, policy. Uh, typically, it's either permit or it's either deny. Okay. So if any, if none of these uh, matches, it will follow the default rules. Sorry, the default action. So the next concept is the uh, tables. Okay. Now, I tables provide specific functions. IP tables contain four tables. The first table is called filter table. And this table is actually for permits or deny a data packet. The next table is called the NAT table. Now NAT as we know it stands for network address translation. And this actually the table is to assist the packet to translate the addresses. Now here we don't talk about either the, they will translate the source address or they translate the destination address or will they translate the ports. Uh, it's ev everything about this table. And the next one is called the mangle table. The mangle table modifies the packet data. Okay, so we can actually manipulate uh, any incoming packet before we actually forward the packet to somewhere else. And the next one is called the raw table. Now the raw table determines whether a data packet are processes using the state of the tracking mechanism. So this is actually to check the state of the packet. Now in terms of the table priority, um, raw is actually the, the first um, table will be, will be uh, used. And then after that followed by mango and then followed by net and then finally is the filter okay so we have to follow the sequence all right so the process of transmitting a data packet by ip tables 
So this is example uh, a, Linux, a Linux machine. This this whole thing is actually a Linux machine. So when this Linux machine receive an inbound data packet, so the the first is it will go through a, a chain called the pre routing chain. Okay. Now as we know, uh, if Linux this if this Linux machine is a firewall, and by default we also need to activate this feature called the uh, routing feature but for a Linux term is actually called the IP uh, forward this is called the IP forward uh, feature it has to be enabled now pre-routing basically means before the packet has been routed or been processed to be routed it actually will went through this chain um, so this chain actually means that uh, if the uh, packet matches the rules that is mentioned here it will actually um, perform a address translation before the routing okay and then after that the packet will then be sent to a forward chain and usually in the forward chain is the filter chain so if the filter chain um, at the end of the day it will look at the rules and the final action will be permit or denied so assume that the uh, this is permit so that the packet will then send to the next chain is called the post routing chain now post routing chain you can also use the chain to process uh, you can perform another NAT another network address translation before the packet sent is that is then sent out as um, a Linux um, administrator or firewall administrator we will either configure the pre routing chain plus the forwarding chain uh, or forwarding chain plus the post routing chain only okay so uh, there's another situation which is like the IP packet is actually sent to uh, the firewall itself the local firewall machine itself so this kind of packet actually will go into a, another chain called the input chain now let's let's compare the difference now the earlier example is that the Linux machine actually receive an inbound data packet but the destination IP address is actually somewhere else so you have to go through the uh, the whole process here the IP table process before the packet will then sent out but this, this is the second situation where the IP packet is actually designated to the local machine so here we have the input chain and typically in the input chain uh, the action will either permit or deny let's assume is permit and the packet will then be sent for internal processing so it will process by the Linux machine itself now there's another scenario which is um, from the Linux machine or the Linux firewall okay let's say we perform uh, some uh, ping tests okay some ping tests or maybe some trace route uh, the uh, the packet was is actually generated from the Linux machine or Linux firewall to outside so in this kind of situation the packet will then be sent to uh, output chain and the output chain will then look at the rules whether we meet the criteria before the packet is then sent to a next chain now post routing means yeah the network address translation do we have any um, rules that matches the uh, post routing if yes it will perform the translation before the packet which is then sent out so this is actually the whole process um, of the um, IP table so in this example uh, we've actually introduced five different chain um, uh, to be processed and you need to know which part is for which function so here's some examples of the IP table rules first of all IP table rules are very complex and the format goes like this we type the command IP tables followed by minus T tables uh, minus T actually stands for the table type okay so example of the table type it can be filter it can be net it can be mingle and it can be raw then followed by the uh, command chain and followed by the criteria minus j means jump to the action okay so command means define how to manage the rule chain is to specify a chain 
and it can be omitted when you define a policy and also the criteria is actually to specify a matching criteria and action is okay so let's look at some examples here for example access to 172.16.00/16 is not permitted so this is how we're going to type in the ip tables so common goes like this ip tables minus t filter now remember you can choose only either one of this then follow minus a input now if you still remember uh, okay minus a actually means to append the rules okay input means go into the chain which is the input chain uh, so uh, this is example when some of the traffic which is actually targeted into the Linux box okay it could be a firewall it could be a Linux running on the on a web server okay um, or maybe the DNS server okay next this is what we call the criteria so minus s means source if the source address comes from 172.16.00.16 the whole entire 16 and also minus p protocol udp okay these two comes together and then minus minus d port d port means the destination port which is equals to 53 so in this example this is actually referring to a dns traffic a dns query okay and minus j drop means the action is to be dropped so this is the uh, the quadruple uh, information that we just spoke about earlier you can specify minus s minus d for destination minus p and followed by udp or minus p followed by tcp and also we can specify like minus s port or d port source port or destination port and followed by the action is drop so that is a brief introduction to the linux firewall